Okay, so it's one in Spirit Tree for Spirit Bolt. Okay. Uh, Primal Tree, which is the primary DPS tree, is going to be one in Stone Fist, one in Rock Armor, one in Chain Lightning, and one in Chain Reaction. We're going to skip Elemental, and we're going to go right to her specialization. And it's one in Blood of the First. It's very important you get that. Remember, most important skill. And I like to get Elemental Weapons on her. And that's pretty much it for her at level 7. Uh, now we're going to move on to the probably the most important and integral character on the team is uh, Varric. Now Varric is going to be your primary DPS, and he's all, or your primary ranged uh, support and DPS character. Uh, he's a nice little mixture of control and uh, damage. So we're just going to build him for not only damage, but a little bit of life so he stays alive. First and foremost... Varric will never have to upgrade his weapons or his equipment. Varric does not have a dex requirement for anything. He always uses Bianca throughout the whole game. Now, if you don't like that per se, you do have the option to build Sebastian in a very, very similar way, or even Isabella if you want. But I prefer that all my characters be out at range because if you are playing on the Nightmare difficulty, Friendly Fire is an issue, and the Two-Handed Warrior is just as much a danger to enemies as it is to its allies. So if you have Isabella running in front of you, and you're in Cleave, and you, you know, you pop a Scythe, and she gets hit with it and dies, well, obviously you're probably going to kill your whole party because now you can't redirect any threat, and you're just going to get killed, and then Meryl's next. So... That's why I pick Varric over uh, usual stuff, but if you're playing on the lower levels, any rogue will work effectively at uh, stopping threat and redirecting it, but I always find Varric to be the best, and his uh, specialization tree is obviously uh, the best one out of all the companions. It really is different than anyone else. Okay, so let's start with the stats here. Uh, Varric is a rogue, and we want him to have high dexterity and also high cunning. Willpower you really don't have to invest much in, but at the end game you want him to have about 175-ish base stamina, so he can not only uh, so he can keep his Bianca song on, but also so he can use Goad, Armistice, Rhyming Triplet, and his other two DPS abilities that he will have at the time all without having to use a stamina draw just yet. Then he gets one more and then he has to use it. So that's what we want. So, he also have enough in reserve to use the back-to-back -back ability, which is kind of important later on in the game. Which will help him when he is pretty much accosted by assassins and things like that. But either way, uh, first and foremost, I want to get him 20 cunning. You want 20 cunning because now he is your chest opener. He's opening all your chests and things like that. So, you want him to have enough cunning to open all the chests in Act 1. 20 cunning is that basis. It goes in tens. Every ten, he can open a new difficulty of chest. Now, in the further levels, when we get to uh, the deep roads, we're going to start giving him more cunning again, simply because he needs to have 30 cunning for Act 2, and so forth. So, what we're going to do now is give him dexterity, because dexterity is damage, and it is also crit. Now, dexterity only buffs damage on even numbers. Okay? If you have 21 dexterity, you're still doing 45 DPS. As you'll see, you're still doing 20, 45 DPS, but if you have 22 dexterity, you're doing 46 DPS. So really, there's no point other than a boost to attack of having odd numbers in dexterity. You're not gaining anything effectively. So we always want to uh, pick an even number to stick with. I'm going to go with 20 right, 22 right now, and we're going to put the rest of that into Constitution. We want him alive. He has a nice little bonus to health. Uh, he doesn't start at 110 health, he starts at 120, so uh, he's actually a little more durable than you think. That's all for stats for our rogue. Now, it's a good thing it just uh, brought us to this tree. This is by far the uh, most important tree uh, for your rogue. It really, really is by far the most important tree. He's going to be able to uh, control the battlefield with this tree and also get a nice bonus to damage, just in case enemies aren't uh, attacking him. Uh, Blindside is the first ability I always take. It gives him a bonus of 20% damage when enemies aren't attacking him, pretty much. And that'll be always, because he is going to be giving us the threat. Our Hawk is going to be tanking, and he will be passing all threat from all our characters onto Hawk. So that is the first ability. 
basically that's just a 20% bonus period that's always active, costs nothing, and is really, really nice to have. Uh, next we're going to have is, not back-to-back, -back, we're going to go with Armistice. Armistice basically reduces threat in a small area by 100%, meaning Anders can sit there and cast 50 spells while Armistice is on, and no one's going to hate him. Except for maybe the enemies, but they're not going to hate him that much. They're not going to hit him enough to attack him. Next, we're going to move on to our DPS tree, our primary DPS tree, and we're going to hit get pin, Pinning Shot. By far one of the best abilities in the Archery Tree. It has a very low cooldown, does a lot of damage, and has two good upgrades. As you can see, with its second upgrade, it will disorient characters. And because it disorients characters, that will synergize with our Meryl Stone Fist. So now we'll have both cross-class combos going on, and that's a lot of added damage. Now usually I only get these, and you should probably get Bursting Arrow too. It's just a good AoE ability right now for this low level gameplay. It does lose a lot of its power as you level up though. Not the best at level 20 and things like that. You'll probably never use it at level 20. Alright, next we're going to get Armistice, of course. I forgot to get it. And probably the most important ability right now for him is Goad. Goad allows you to take threat off one character and put it on another. Meaning if Anders is getting destroyed, he's getting his ass raped. All he has to do is go, oh, Goad. And all those enemies are going to want to attack Hawk instead of Anders. So we're going to get that. Now you have one extra uh, ability. Basically, this is a streamline. Uh, you can level this guy up to six like that, but he doesn't have all these abilities in the correct order we want. He's going to have things like uh, speed from the specialization ability. We don't need that. We have haste. You don't need speed. Uh, first thing I want to say is if you want to supplement his DPS more, definitely Rhyming Triplet is a nice little ability to have right now. It's sustainable throughout the whole game. It does a good amount of damage. If you want him to be more defensive, you can get him back to back, which allows him to teleport to an, uh, enemies, away from enemies, to Anders, to you, wherever you want him to be. I would not suggest getting a uh, Hail of Arrows, especially if you're playing on the Nightmare difficulty. Uh, he'll pull a lot of threat and also kill your party and do a lot of damage to your Hawk. Archer's Lance also hits uh, uh, characters like your Hawk because it hits all characters in a straight line. So if he shoots at the same character you're shooting at, you're going to take that damage right in the ass. So that's a really, you should not get Archer's Lance ever, unless you're playing on hard or medium and things like that. Otherwise, you're going to be taking most of the Archer's Lances. Uh, so I get Rhyming Triplet at this point. Rhyming Triplet only affects the character it's being shot at, so you don't have to worry about it penetrating you from behind. And that's it for Varric. We're done with his abilities. Now we're on to Hawk. Hawk is obviously the most important character in your party. Hawk is going to be tanking. Hawk is going to be doing damage. Hawk is going to be carrying your team without a doubt. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about stats. How do I distribute your stats? First, you have to decide on a build. I'm going to be playing the two most popular builds this playthrough. Uh, we're going to play as the Berserker. And we're also going to play as the Reaver Templar, which is a burst build. So we're going to first uh, play as the Berserker, I think. Because it is the only build so far I have not played for the 200 Warrior or tried. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, we want Strength. Strength is our damage, strength is our lifeblood, and the same thing applies to strength as it does to, uh, as it as applies to dexterity. Odd numbers do not benefit you in any way other than raising your attack a little bit, so it's always best to invest in strength to even numbers. Dexterity, we're not going to touch. All our crit chance bonuses will come from equipment and abilities and skills, things like that. We do not need to touch dexterity and we do not need to touch magic or cunning. Willpower is pretty important, but right now I only put it to 113. You want about 140 stamina with gear on, things like that. Because if you're using Hayden's Razor like you should be, you shouldn't have any problem. Constitution is our second most important stat. And I like to get it really, really close to uh, strength. I'm going to put this one point in strength anyway, just because there's no better place to put it right now. But from 7 to 8, 
you're going to probably want to put a little bit more into willpower. But Hayden's Razor does do a good job of giving you extra uh, stamina to use. 24 stamina. I mean, it's almost 5 points of uh, willpower right there. And you'll be using it for most of Act 1. So in Act 2, you can change it up a little bit and put more back into willpower. But right now, you can kind of lack on it. And so I am. Alright, the most important thing you want to do as Hawk is first go to your two-handed tree and get Mighty Blow. Mighty Blow is just a solid, solid, solid ability. Uh, it's actually one of your best abilities. It interrupts enemies, it interrupts uh, spellcasters, things like that. So it's always good to use Mighty Blow when someone's either casting a spell or channeling something or trying to uh, call allies, things like that. Uh, the next ability you want to take is definitely got to be uh, Giant's Reach. Giant's Reach basically helps you tank enemies even further away from you, uh, keep established uh, threat on all characters you're attacking, and especially ones in the back. It grants one, meters, one meter to your melee swing, so you'll be hitting an even bigger arc than before. It's very important to take that. The next ability I like to take is actually Reaper, or Scythe. It turns into Reaper at level 9. This is a really important ability too because this has a great hitbox, has a huge hitbox. But you have to be careful with it on Nightmare because you will one-shot a lot of your companions with this ability. Uh, I like taking it at this point because it adds uh, another like uh, layer of uh, attack spell so you have less downtime. I mean obviously you don't want to just depend on Mighty Blow to do all your damage. Uh, definitely get Reaper to uh, get Reaper at level 9. Definitely a must-have probably at level 9, if not the most important skill. Uh, I also like to get Sunder early. A lot of people say don't get Sunder early, but I prefer Sunder early. Especially because I've already upgraded uh, Meryl for Sunder, so I like to get Sunder early. Now we have 4 points left. So what we're going to do is get Might, like earlier, and Control. Well, this is Control, this is Might. I like to get those two, and I also like to get Cleave. Cleave is by far your best ability <laughs> for any build. Uh, Cleave doubles your damage. Do I need to say more about that? Not really. Now we're going to continue on. And let me check real quick, guys. I want to see what I'm, what I'm getting. Got everything I want. Alright, you have some decisions to make with your final ability a point. A lot of people, pardon me, a lot of people play different ways. A lot of people play uh, more so just toward the uh, Reaver specialization. But you have a lot of options with this one point at this point. Now, you should make a decision on what you want to play as right now. Now, the Reaver is going to give you the most bang for your buck just for putting the specialization bonus in it. But Berserker will also give you a little bit of bang for your buck. Stamina regeneration rate isn't that big of a deal because... We only regenerate stamina when we kill enemies as a uh, warrior, not when we're actually uh, hitting them. The rogue only does that. The rogue will gain stamina every time he hits with a melee strike, regardless if it dies or not. We only get stamina when we kill something. Simple as that. So at level... What are we? We're level 7. Okay, so level 7, you do have a choice here. Uh, you can either get Destroyer. This is a very, very good ability. It's nice to have. Whenever you crit, you're going to do 50% more damage, pretty much. And it gives you a 10% bonus to damage in general. Because every one of the enemies in this game is going to be having armor rating. Or damage resistance rating. So this is a great ability to take early. A lot of people like to skip this and go straight for Whirlwind. But this build is not going to be using Whirlwind because it's not a master of AoE or activated abilities. It is a master of sustained DPS. Sustained DPS means I have no downtime. The Berserker uh, two-hander will not have downtime, but it will not. It will also not be dealing the kind of burst damage, which is instant big numbers like that. It won't be dealing that kind of damage at all. It's based around sustained damage, meaning it has very little downtime, and it does. It's not dependent on its abilities. It's not completely dependent on them. So you can either go with Destroyer here, or you can go with. Uh, Improve Mighty Blow, Whirlwind, depending on what you want to do. If you're going the more uh, Vanguard heavy route, 
If you're not going to be a Berserker, you're just going to be like a Reaver and a Templar for pure burst. You get Whirlwind, I'd suggest Whirlwind. If you're like me and you're going to be playing as a Berserker, we're going to invest in the Berserker abilities. And we're not going to get Berserk quite yet. We're 